Welcome, welcome back to Crafting a Meaningful Life. I'm Mary Crafts, and once again, delighted. You know that. I'm saying it every time, I just, but I just feel that way. I record this on a Monday morning, so it's the first day of the week. And I've had time to think about it all weekend. And so this is how I start every single one of my weeks. Coming to you, getting reflective inside of myself, thinking, what piece is it that I can offer this week that will lift my life, lift your life? And as we lift our own lives, that's how we lift the lives of others. I had somebody say to me at the gym uh, just on Saturday, they said, well, I, we were talking about problems that they were experiencing in their life. And I said, so tell me kind of, you know, what you're doing, uh, how are you focusing on that? And he said back to me, uh, well, I'm really focused on being of service to others. And I said, well, I, 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 while I do love that, when you are so troubled and distraught in your own life, does that fill your bucket or do you, does it empty it? And there's kind of this feng shui, as we'll lead to later, between learning to take care of yourself and loving yourself and learning to take care of others. And if you remember that feng shui sign, that yin and yang sign, that have the, they're equal parts and that it's impossible for us to continue to give to lift others for a long term if we don't fill our own bucket first. And I have so many different modalities that I use to fill my bucket. And so to that end, I wanted to share with you one of the things uh, that I kind of recently came across that was just a little piece of light for me that I was able to say, oh, Thank you for that healing and thank you for that understanding. So to that end, I'm bringing on my friend, Marilyn Jones. Welcome, Marilyn. Thank you. <laughs> so happy to be here. So nice to have you. You reminded me when we met this last week of a story that I had forgotten about, but when you started sharing it, I immediately remembered and that uh, you were brought as a guest to a meeting that I was at and uh, you were just kind of there observing and I was there and, uh, later in the evening, I walked up to you and just said, Marilyn, I'm so nice to meet you. I just know we're going to be good friends. Mm -hmm. And I had completely forgot about that. We lost track of each other, you know, going our own separate ways in life, experiencing things in life. And when we came back together and you we started telling the story, I was like, oh, I remember this. I remember this, Marilyn, and here we are, and back we united are. again. I love that. I do too. So, so I'd like to start with having you share with people a little bit of your journey in life and kind of the prelude to what led up to where you are now and what you do. Okay. Well, um, actually almost 12 years ago, I lost my husband. Um, at 34 to a massive heart attack. I had three very small children and um, I had lost, I had already lost my mother-in-law and my nephew. And then a year later, my father died. A year, a, about a year and a half after that, my father-in-law died. About another year and a half after that, my mom um, and then another nephew. So it was uh, wow. quite the journey. Um, That's a, a lot of years. letting go and healing in a short amount of time. It and was. It the was, chances that you were completely healed before the next one happened is pretty small. Yeah. Yes. It was. It was a lot for sure. And I. I soon realized my. My biggest experience in my realization is that I didn't know how my husband passed away until three months after he died. Um, and when we. Uh, got that report, um, the release that my body felt, mm. um, and the knowing that I felt that there is just so much more that I am in control of, um, the, the power within me and the body, the mind, body, spirit connection, um, is, is just amazing. So, uh, I, and so I want you to stop right there for just a minute. I want to go back just a couple sentences. You said something that I think is incredibly powerful that so many people miss in this life is that once you knew 
what had happened to him and you had the knowledge, then you were able to really move on and and settle and understand your feelings. I think yes. there's a lot of us, including myself at times, that don't want to know. You know, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't show me, don't speak to me. I just <laughs> want to be here in my, you know, dumbness. Um, because what you don't know out there often creates fear. And so right. this little space right here, I know how to deal with that. I don't know how to deal with that out there. So you just stay there. But you experience that true revelation and what happens when you actually step into knowing. I did. And I didn't even realize at the time the energy that I was carrying. You know, I, I, you, I just carried it. I, it just was what was happening. And then as that release came, I mean, it was immediate, but I just, it, it mm. was amazing to me. So it sent me on this journey um, of wanting to heal myself, of wanting to listen to my inner self and trusting my own intuition and how it's really a basis of self-love, you know, how, how mm. do I find this? Um, because I know that that is, you know, at the point that I'm at in life now, I, I know that it, it comes from a point of self-love. You, you have to get to that point and process and heal. Um, but you, you know, you can't help other people, including my children. My children were very much my drive. Um, and you know, me wanting them to be able to heal and, um, continue to live and live a good life. We, we had so, so many other things in life, you know, um, all of the, the qualities, um, of everything that we, that we wanted. We just didn't have our husband and dad. Um, not just, you know, that that's yeah. huge. Um, and then grandparents and, and all of that. So to bring an understanding and, um, emotional intelligence, um, into, into my relationships, into my family, um, for my children. Um, I, I decided that I wanted to really know, you know, what I can do to learn and to help mm. others through my experience. So let's talk for just a minute about, cause I'm sure there are people who are listening to this podcast who think, well, of course she was trying to help her children. What's wrong with that? Why would she, why would she not help her children? Or, well, I've always heard that the best way out of depression was uh, to serve others. So how do you kind of look at those two things together and what, what, what path have you taken with that? Um, I think, you know, it started, it had to start with my children because I was not in a place where it could start with me. I, I was very, I was very numb, um, you know, to, you, you just go on autopilot. You just, you just do and go. And, you know, I went through many days that I, I didn't even know how I got there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but starting with my kids and being able to, you know, support them brought me to a place where I, I felt like a good mom and where I could then, you know, turn inward. And I, I very soon realized that if I didn't turn that inward, then I was, that's when I became the mom that I didn't want to be. You know, we all have our struggles. It's, it's natural to, you know, none of us are perfect. Um, I'm not even striving for perfection for that matter. Um, but it's, it's that wanting to um, know more and the the knowing of, you know, if you don't take time for yourself, you're, I, I, the way that I grew up and the way that um, my community is, you know, I always felt that it was selfish to take time for myself. Um, and I, I, as soon as I could accept and have a, a real inner knowing of that is very selfless um, and not selfish, I could continue on the path of, you know, not only healing myself, but, but then extending and being able to um, heal others and help others in the process. I think that that's a key piece is that you began to listen to yourself. Yes. And for me, um, there were decades when I only was able to get up in the morning and survive because of my children. 
and because of wanting to be there for them and serve them and doing the best I could. And then, but after now 25 years of that, my bucket was so empty. It took me another two decades to begin to fill it back up. And mm -hmm. so I wished, if I had started that differently with a different thought process of yes, I still want to be of service to my family, my children, to my neighbors, um, to the to the community. And then also, what do I need? If you can begin those more hand in hand rather than, you know, as the martyr, I'm going to sacrifice everything for me. And how do we walk through this together? I know you well enough, Marilyn, to know that that turning in and listening in became a deep, deep part of your life that led to such great healing. Let's talk about that piece for just a minute. And, and where did you find that modality that was going to, to help you? Well, like you, I, um, I have many different modalities that help me. Um, I, I started with Reiki. Uh, I, I did a lot of, I learned how to meditate. Um, I learned how to really go, go inward. And, you know, I've, I've always been a, I, a big podcaster. I love, I love a good podcast and there's so much to learn from other people. And thank um, you. You listen to my podcast. Yay. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. And yes, so much to learn. It's just, it's, it's amazing. So pulling those people in and then, um, you know, with feng shui, when I had my own chart um, read years ago, what it did for me was to um, start on that path of self-love so that, you know, there's things in those readings that like, this is who you are. And I was, you know, I just thought to myself, I, I don't want other people to know this. This is my shadow side. I thought that I hid this. Wait, other people see it, you know? Um, so it was an acceptance and all, and not just for those things, but also taught me to listen to my intuition. I've always been an intuitive person, but I didn't know um, what to do with that, how to deal with that. As a teenager, you know, it, it made me kind of be rebellious. Um, it made me want to, um, I, I didn't think like everyone else did. Um, and so I, I was trying to find what that meant for myself. So I've had lots of different um, experiences through life that, that brought me to this. And, um, and I, feng shui is where I'm at uh, right now. I still do many, many other and use many other modalities uh, on a daily basis. Uh, but feng shui is something that really spoke to me. Um, I, I love interior design and teaching how to, um, you know, allow our environment to support us. Um, and it's, it's been something that has just been so helpful to bring the peace around me so that mm -hmm. I can feel like I can deal with these other bigger things that are coming at me in life. Mm. So, uh, how does feng shui relate to what I think of as the yin and yang sign? Because I keep kind of using them interchangeably, but I don't think that that's quite right. So tell me about that. Well, they are fairly interchangeable. It's the masculine and feminine energies that we all have, has nothing to do with gender. So feng shui is right. the concept. It has, there's three core concepts in feng shui. First, that uh, it's chi. Everything is energy. Everything around us is energy. And then there's five elements um, in feng shui. All of them um, are not only uh, can used on be used on an elemental um, basis, but also have colors that apply to them. Um, and then the third one is the duality of all things, and that is the yin and yang or yin yeah. and yang. Um, and that there is duality in in all things, and that brings a lot of self awareness. Um, yeah, you know when we it, talked the other day on the phone, and I think that. <clears throat> Thinking about that symbol, the, the yin and yang, uh, that's light and dark. And there's, a, of course, that inner tendency to like, oh, no, just the light, just the light, not, not interested in the dark. And when we 
actually, when I actually stepped into acceptance that I was both and that there were shadow and light sides to every piece of me, the pieces that I loved also had a shadow. Right. And if I continued to reject that, I was never going to come to understand it and accept it and work with it in my life. And it's that key piece I talk to so many people about all the time on this podcast about vulnerability. If I'm not willing to look at my dark side, my shadow, then how can I possibly heal it? How can I, how can I possibly not, I almost hate myself, Marilyn, from if that darkness, that shadow shows up, then like, oh, bad, Mary, bad, bad, rather than saying, (laughs) Okay, let's take a look at that. What's that about? Where's that coming from? Where's that coming what's from? What's writing it? Yes. So, well, and if you believe that it's energy forces, and you know the the yang is masculine energy, it's the sunshine. The yin is feminine energy. It's the moon, um, or birth and death. And if you were to move that with energy, and it it started to spin, they would literally combine and become gray, Uh, right? So it's the gray matter that we, we talk about as well, which in most senses is harmony. mm. That's where you find that is by integrating those together. So in interior design, I've heard about this so often. Um, You know, you want to have a feng shui environment, companies, every single major company in the world has had someone like you come in and design their offices to be feng shui and at first it was just kind of one of those terms but then they began to really see that productivity went up culture became richer in the companies that they brought they came into the office with more peace uh how do you begin to design such a thing well it is the concept feng shui is is the it's wind and water that is the translation of the word so uh it's the seen and unseen energies and Uh, the idea that if you're moving those things and creating um space for the unseen energy um with that seen energy then you will feel it it will it it moves energy for you so if you're going in you know even in your home right and you look at something and think oh i want to just i need to move that and as soon as you do you just get this good feeling of oh that just feels so much better you know it's it's very it really can be very simple um and you can do a lot if you have money you can do a lot if you don't have money it doesn't you know there's a lot that can be done um, just by moving the things that we already have, by knowing ourselves mm-hmm. um, and, you know, knowing how to accept ourselves, that is all energy movement. It's all uh, um, brings a power within. It brings a self-awareness and recognition. So what, when you design either a home or an office building, but let's start with just the home since that's a little bit easier to kind of understand because it's just you that's living there and your family. Um, how do you begin to do that? What, what, what should people be thinking as they're walking around their home? They should be, what should they be thinking? Well, I think the first place to start is with your front door. Your entry is huge. That's the mouth of the chi. So that is where we allow energy to Uh. enter our homes. And it's also where we allow energy to leave our homes. Um, so, and you want that exchange, you want both, you want things that are bringing that especially good energy, um, into your home. Uh, so, you know, clutter, everyone sees clutter differently. Um, to some people it's clutter, to some people it's an organized mess, right? Um, (laughs) and that's, that is indicative of, of, um, a a chart reading, you know, what, what element, um, you are kind of governed by. Um, and then as you look around, you don't want any obstacles. So when you come in, you know, so if it's clutter, if it's shoes, if it's, uh, what, if it's a table, um, you know, if you go into a restaurant, they have the hostess that's, that's positioned right there as an energetic stop they want you here stop here so you put those energetic stops um in in your homes as well so if you're walking in 
um, and you know, you want people to be welcomed into your home, you bring an open space, even if it's a small space, if you're choking that chi, if you're closing things mm. off and you have too much stuff, um, you know, or over decorating even, um, it's just, it's choking that chi and not allowing it to, mm. to really flow. You know, in my, when you did my, uh, chart reading, you asked me the question, um, are you, uh, a little OCD? You were trying to, you know, put it kind of like this. And I was like, no, I don't do that. I don't have to go around straightening everything. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not with CD. <laughs> anyway, so I was explaining this to John, my partner. And so last night we were sitting on the sofa and, um, cause he said as well, he said, no, I don't, I don't think you're OCD. I don't feel like you cleaning up behind me or anything like that. But we got up from the sofa and I promptly rearranged the pillows. <laughs> and he said, are you aware that you rearrange those pillows every time that we get up before you walk out of this room? I go, well, yeah, yeah, of course. What? And, and I said, of course, I just want it to be that's tidy. I, I just want it to be tidy. And he goes, I think that's the OCD she was talking about. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and it's okay. just the, the way that you see things. That's the way yeah. that your mind works, you know, and sometimes it come becomes there's there's different levels of OCD, um, you know, so there doesn't have to be the, the negative connotation that we uh, put to it right. sometimes. But yes, I'm just neat and tidy. I'm just, that's, right. that's right. <laughs> Accept that of yourself. You and you love that, right? You love I do. The, the I, that it brings. I do. And, and when I walk in other people's, um, it's interesting because when I walk in other people's room, I'm not houses. I'm not really judgmental of them, but I'm I am aware that there are piles or different things, and um, so I think that everyone has different levels of what's okay with them and what's not okay with them. And I'm I'm just Jim Dandy of it with in somebody else's house. I just don't want that in my house. <laughs> right. Yeah, I feel the same. <laughs> okay, so from from deciding to study um, feng shui and then moving down that modality, how did you then begin to apply that? You probably first applied it uh, to your own life and then to a, assisting others. And what does that piece have to do with the... Uh, Chinese astrological chart that you read to me. How is all that feng shuiing together? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, how I first, my first real awareness of it is my little boy was having some anger issues um, after when he started going to kindergarten. He was fine at school and he would come home and he was just angry. Um, and to, to make it short, we are Utah Utes fans. We, um, he had a lot of red in his room, um, which is fire energy. It's a, it's a big energy and his room was literally adding to that fire and just, it was too much stimulation for him. And when I had my mentor, who's my mentor to this day, Tina Falk, she came in and said, Oh, we've got to change this. Uh, this, this is why this is what's happening. And we didn't change everything. There's still, there were still some, um, red highlights and, uh, things in there, those accents, uh, but changing his bed, his bedding was the first thing I did. And it was an overnight change. Now, not everyone has that experience. Um, you know, and a lot of the time our, our energy has to, we have to learn to accept it. And then we start feeling, um, what it, what it feels like, but f for kids, especially they're, you know, um, very intuitive. Um, so it, it affected him immediately. Uh, that kind of took me down the path of, you know, just wanting to learn more, wanting to learn more. Uh, and so I, I really intuitively, um, you know, I made a lot of different changes and then I decided that I needed to move um, after after eight years of, you know, I had, I had built my dream home with my uh, first husband and um, it was, it was, I felt like it was keeping me in a stuck place, even mm -hmm. though it was one of the very hardest things I've ever had to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, to this day, I feel like it was a wonderful, a great decision. And when I moved into the home that I'm in, I again... This was four years ago. I had Tina come down and 
uh, do a consultation for me. And she looked around and was like, you need to believe in yourself. You've done everything. You know, there were a few changes that she had, uh, had or suggestions that she sure. um, had for me. But at that point in time, I, I, I just knew that, you know, this is, I need to pay attention to this, this, I, I do have a natural ability for it. Um, this is where I, where I want to be and what I want to do. I, I really love that idea that we can create our homes that we may feel peaceful in them and secure, but that even is more opening to our spirit. Uh, is. That is so critical to me right now. My, my home is my sanctuary. Right. My home is where I meditate most of the time. My home is, um, I've had, uh, of course, after I divorced my husband, enough relationships that, that weren't in keeping with me that I was concerned about needing to protect and eventually then to let go of the need to protect and just feeling safety Yes. first and foremost. Yes. I felt safe within my home and and it's so important so important rather than protect it's a it's a shift in thought process rather than yes. protect about the outside coming in and 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 nervous about that rather to turn that inside and just feel safe with yourself and safe with your environment and then safe with the outside world and that's kind of where that starts I love right. that thought knowing that you can bring all of that in and how much, you know, control we really have to, um, to harmonize our own, our own spaces. Our environment is our first relationship, you know, like whatever environment we're in, uh, when a baby is born, their environment is that first relationship and that, that moves with us our entire lives. Um, and if you can learn to, um, you know, teach yourself how to, um, have a, a good response to it. It's, it's the recognition, um, you know, in our, our responses to our, our environment and the energy that we absorb, uh, all of the things that have to go, to go with that. Um, it, it tells our environment tells a lot about our pain as well. You know, the, the inside shows, um, on the outside. And if we can, if we can do things that are creating that safety and that balance and bringing that, um, you know, feel, we're all really ultimately looking to feel safe in life, right? Mm -hmm. And we're looking for that yeah. from people, from our environment, from our space. We, if we can feel that safety, again, we can work on those other things. So in, when you did my Chinese astrological reading, how, for someone who doesn't understand um, how this would play a role in, in their life and why it may be of value, how would you begin to explain that? Like when you wanted to do mine, you asked for my date of birth, month, year, month, day, and then you asked for the time that I was born and I had to go to my baby book and <laughs> see what my mom, because my, if it was in my baby book, it was gospel truth. Just tell me. I, my mom was yeah, like right. that. It's just a little OCD. Did I mention that? <laughs> We're just finding out. This yeah, just amazing. finding out about that. And um, I, I never attached that to her, but I, I don't know why I didn't ever see that before, but it's true. Um, but so it was a true time. And I, and I even gave that piece to you. And how does all of that come to play a part in, in who you are today and how you, how, what your tendencies are, how you act, what you, what you have brought with you into the world? Well, we all have different gifts, right? We all have different things, um, different, different superpowers that we're born with. Um, some of us are truly born, um, you know, with, with different struggles. Um, and it, it tells this chart, it's, it's kind of a roadmap of, um, who you are, what's to come. The year's energy, um, changes with that. There's, there's really a lot to it. Um, a big depth to that. Um, 
So learning, you know, like I said, it for me, it really brought um, a piece of accepting myself, of just saying, oh, this is how I am. So you have taking all of that information, um, it it applies the energy that was in the world uh, when you were born. Uh, and then there's a formula to figure out the elements, the percentages of elements that you are, the, the element that um, proceeds uh, is called your day master. So every piece of that birth information is very important. Um, and then there's animals as well. And they tell a story. They tell the um, more of the interactions and, you know, why you respond. Um, it, it gives you an idea of what you can do. Um, you know, there's always changes that can be made. It, it doesn't, it's meant to empower you. It, it doesn't mean that, oh, this is what I was given. Here, see, here's my excuse. I'm stuck. Now, there's always things, you know, you can say, well, I, I want to change that. How do I change my response? Um, and you can, you can use elements um, to, to first create that response. So when I go into someone's home, you can definitely do a home um, that is just directional energy. You can go into a home, apply a compass, um, and get the directional energy of the home and say, you know, I have these suggestions for you according to your home's energy. But the my very favorite part is to apply that personal energy as well. So, and I, I always want to give that option to someone because not everyone is, is open to, uh, you know, it, it can be pretty vulnerable as well. Um, and oh yeah, I mean, there was stuff in my reading that you that. read to me, I was like, well, I'm glad Marilyn and I are friends. Yeah. <laughs> there were not too many things that I thought that, but <laughs> we are always more critical of ourselves, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> you know, I think all of us, I don't care what, um, what you use or how you see this, but every single one of us at some point, when you see it in the, in it used to be in the newspaper, but um, on the on your feed, in your internet, uh, wherever you walk across it, if there's an astrological you know reading there, and almost everybody glances down at their month and and their sign, and just to see, just to see, you know, they're not yeah. believing, but just to see, okay, but it's, uh, yeah. huh? Well, that's about true, because when I first read, for example, this was reading. Um, the astrology of you know where I was a Leo and uh every time I would read those I'm like dang are they watching me you know <laughs> see this is the big brother how do they know what's going on how do they know how I am because I am like a Leo through and through blah blah you know blah and uh and then when you read this Chinese one to me it was so much more in depth and um there I wasn't I wasn't a, just a Leo, you know, I was like all these other animals. I'm like, I wouldn't have picked one of these animals because it sounded horrible. But then as, I, <laughs> as you explained it to me, I was actually like, oh my gosh. And then you included this timeline where it talked about in the middle part of my life, who was my animal? The ox. And we began to read about that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that was my life right then. I was the pulling the heavy burden and and just being just having to keep my head down and keep moving forward. But the ox was also strong. And I developed such Determined. strength during that part of my life. And then, you know, and then what I went to next, and weren't you kind of amazed at how they lined up with my life? I was so amazed. Not everyone's chart is extremely indicative, but yours was seriously amazing. Like, for example, <laughs> it said at age 56, I shifted out of the ox. Ugh, I'm going to get through this no matter what, I, no matter how deep I'm in the mire and the mud. And it shifted to the to lion or to the tiger. tiger. The mm -hmm. and, then, and then to come into that being of, of, my power rather than my strength right and that was the year i got a div my divorce yeah and fire is intuition so that it added that you know that transformation it was a time for big change yeah and then 
this is why we got connected again because I had posted on my social media about I came to the point where I just knew that I was no longer loud and roaring, but I was now a rabbit listening. And some of you who listen all the time remember that podcast and how speaking was not as important anymore as listening and the quietness and the beauty of being so abundant and prolific and a mother to all. And you reached out and you said, well, just so you know, <laughs> you, you just, just left the, the astrological <laughs> sign of, you just left the tiger and right. now we're in the rabbit. And, and was that like, was the year energy. That was from last year's tiger energy to this year's tiger or yeah. rabbit energy. And then when I looked at your chart, it's called your luck pillar. Those lined up as well because now you have left that tiger right. into this rabbit. So you have even more of that energy and it's just a softer and you feel it. It's followed. It's, it's pretty yeah. amazing, isn't it? So I promptly <laughs> went out and bought this little piece of jade that's a little rabbit. Oh, I love it. <laughs> to that's wear amazing. it around my neck all the time now. And then I found a, a little jade bracelet that was the same because people see this when they look at me and they right. ask me, but I see this one. I don't have it on this morning. I don't know why. I always wear it. But um, but it's what I see that reminds me. It's, it stands as a reminder to me. Like, right. um, you know, we we all have, in the days of old, people used to wear talismans. And back then, uh -huh. they were like a box in the middle of your forehead so everybody could see <laughs> how righteous you were. And, right. you know, I, I'm not carrying all my scriptures inside a little box on my forehead. <laughs> but I do love that I'm able to see it and touch it and remind me. And uh, it's helped me so much just thinking about this whole reading you gave to me. It's another modality in my being able to self heal, yes. to understand and move forward more as this whole being. Yes. So and in our last, together. in our last couple minutes, um, Marilyn, as we go through this, what kind of, things would you like to leave um, with our listeners of what invitation, what, what understanding would you like them to have? Oh, well, I, my, my biggest thing is to trust your, trust yourself, trust that there is power within, you know, we are all spiritual beings. Um, we all have a higher self, um, and to, to know that and to be able to, you know, learn from all of our experiences and know I, you have to experience the, the entire experience, the good, the bad, the ugly. I mean, it, yeah. you know, there are things in life that, that throw us down and, you climb back up and sometimes you get thrown back down again. Um, and in the process of all of that, I've, I've taught myself, um, to think of, you know, what the lesson is in that. What did I learn? What can I pull from this? Um, and, and not to, you know, I, I don't ever want, um, I, I want that to, to be my drive in life. It's, um, it's, just to live life is for living. You know, we, we have to spend the time on healing. We have to spend the time, um, you know, on, on realizing all of these things that are affecting us and recognizing them and sit with them because if you don't, then you can't live. Um, but we don't take our experiences have, have so much power. Um, to help us move in the right direction, to help guide us, um, and and learning about us, um, you know, our our own selves, being selfless with ourselves, um, to to learn what we need to about us, so that we can be our own light and guide us. I think is is really the the best thing that you can do for yourself. So beautifully said. The best thing we can do is find our own light. 
and listen to it and learn to be intuitive. And this is just another tool in that process. And I love that you have studied this so in-depthly and that your, your talents and your learnings are available for all. We've included at the end of this podcast your website as well as how to follow you on social media. And I, I hope that others are curious about this and reach out and learn to live in, in the beauty of the light and the dark. And in that, that we can create our own feng shui atmosphere and love and presence in our own lives. So thank you. Thank you for being here and sharing your wonderful wisdom with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. You're so welcome, Marilyn. And take this and think about it and, and continue to learn and understand more. Because that truly is how we craft a meaningful life. Thank you. Listen to the full podcast today and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and more. Crafting a Meaningful Life with Mary Crafts.